Well, isn't this one just a peach? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. And we're going to kick things off with this $5,300 Les Paul Jr. reissue. Huh. Yeah, that doesn't look much like a junior to me either. We've got a crazily figured Koa body. We've got gold hardware. It's not a wrap tailpiece anymore. It has a dedicated ABR1 bridge with the stop bar tailpiece. We've got the reissue styled amber knobs. We don't have any type of a pick guard on it, but instead of a single dog ear P90 to be a junior, it's got double humbuckers. I would more so call this one like a souped up 57 special, but even then you can throw the rule book out of the window because it basically has a custom fretboard over here. It's bound, it's got the mother of pearl block inlay, it's straight up ebony. But sure enough, you get to the face of the headstock, it is badged as a special. It's a little bit askew, that's probably why it's in the mod collection. It's got our historic style truss rod cover on it, Grover tuner surprisingly, and it looks like a little bit of tinted lacquer going on. Oh, we switch over to the back. I did not realize this on launch day. That's a mahogany back. Now that might not seem like a big deal to you, but you gotta remember, flat top Les Pauls don't normally have a separate wood top. So now I'm curious, is the Koa half the top or is it just like a traditional thickness? That appears to be relatively thin. Is it just a veneer? Probably not. I would say it's just a small top. Yeah, we get a black stinger back here just for added greatness. We've seen a few of these come out of the custom shop for dealer special runs, and I'm betting this isn't actually a mod collection creation. It was a blemished one that they didn't want to sell in the demo shop, because it is pretty special. But very cool that we get the Gator style reissue case. Love those things. Following that up is our opening teaser called Black Blush. Now you might look at this title, 60 standard. Those things are like, what, 3K-ish brand new? Why is this one selling at a premium? Well, it's got a peachy finish. It's a nice black border with some pink. It's not traditional, but I kind of like it. This would look really good with the same bursted edges. It really reminds me of the night violet color that you could find on some select Les Paul studios in the early 80s. We've got a toggle switch here, and we've got another toggle switch down there. It almost looks like one of Gibson's old kill switches from the BFG series. Then we got our barrel style knobs. Everything else looks pretty standard here. Uncovered bridge pickup, push-pull coil splitting for both of your burst bucker pickups. But if you look really closely, you know what those are. Those are piezo saddles, so that means you've got some acoustic tones. So I would assume this might be like an on and off for that system, and then master volume, master tone for your magnetic pickups. Unfortunately though, they did not continue the pink burst on the back and sides. And judging by the headstock, the whole thing is a satin finish. But oh, that's a chunky one. Would you look at this? Gibson's given the lefties some love. We've got Savory Scarlet on a 60 standard this time. It's not the most exciting color out there. It looks like a satin deep red. Kind of reminds me of the Les Paul Catalina with the cream plastics. And then the back just has its regular cherry color. It's got a good weight and it looks like they played around with our pickups a little bit. This next one's cool. Remember how I was just talking about the night violet finish? It also came on Explorers. And now look at this lefty Explorer for 2700. If you just think this is an ebony finish and it's kind of boring, no, it's a really dark purple. That's an awesome color for an explorer. I almost think a black pick guard would play off better because it's like overexposing the camera so you don't actually get to see the fantastic job that they did here. And backwards explorer headstocks are always freaky. If you want that on a right-handed guitar, check out the Gibson M3 series. And here's a mock-up of what it would look like as a right-handed one. Unfortunately, no bursted back of the neck, but at least they did the body, so I'll give them props for that. I'm not surprised the Explorer sold and the other one hasn't yet. I'm all for the lefties finally getting a little bit of love because they seem to get left out of a lot of things. So if they could cater to them with some interesting refinished examples through the mod collection, that's one way they could reach that audience that is very vocal on the internet. Lefties, if you want to see them continue to do this stuff, you better buy these. But as right, he's got Regal Plum 50 standard. This one looks more like a metallic plum finish and it doesn't necessarily have a burst, Burst Bucker 1 in the neck and then a DC high gain humbucker bridge. That is certainly unique. This is one of those times I heavily agree with this nice dark ambered over finish. That mahogany has a great color to it. And they knew what they were doing with that one by pricing it with a premium. But if you don't like dark purple, how about this one? They call it autumn brown burst finish here, but dark cask burst up there. And then if you actually buy this on the box, it'll probably have something completely different. I don't see why they have to make up three or four different names for the same thing. I'm having a hard time deciding what color is that. Is it like a rusty orange or like a natural mahogany burst color similar to what you would find on this guitar that we classic antique model? I like it. I think it looks good. And what's this about demo shop finished knobs? I don't see any finish on those. 
It's got a regular natural back and sides. Now it's time to enter our blue period, Pelham C Satin. On a 63 SG Custom? All right. So it's kind of expensive, around 6,000 bucks, but it's got the vibe. Three uncovered humbuckers, 64 style Vibrola, all the good other custom elements. And they gave you a white backplate on the back with a complete refinish. And that's kind of chunky for an SG, almost nine pounds. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of surprised that one sold as quick as it did. But Metallica fans will love being trapped under jagged ice. Kind of a nice blue burst and they slapped the wrong Bigsby on it, a B5 Vibramate. Usually you see the B7s on the Les Pauls due to their whole carved top. It fits, it's technically correct, and you find them on some bursts occasionally. But if you thought this one looked weird, it's because of that. But it's just a nice blue burst finish, kind of reminds you of the Goddess series, but maybe a little bit more souped up. Less of a flat color, more metallic. No matching logo or anything like that. Interesting choice to have a black back. The side profile shot looks pretty good. If you don't like the light blues, how about the return of Teal Talic? I like this one because it looks like Pelham Blue that's been lightly aged with the yellow clear coat. That's very similar vibes. And even your logo has a little bit of yellowing to it, so you know that's how they did it. That headstock looks satin. That's the easiest way to tell on these finishes. Just look at the face of the headstock. If it looks nice and glossy, you know it's gloss. But if it's really flat, then you know. Because sometimes it can be hard to tell just by photos. But here's our back of our headstock. That one's from 2019. And it was just a complete refin. And then lastly, we're going back to baby blue. This one, for some reason, looks awfully cheap. We don't have the pick guard, but at least it's a gloss refin. They threw the modern style knobs on it. Uncovered pickups, which are the T-types, nice. It's an okay weight, a little under 10 pounds. They left the back and neck natural, and it's got some decent figuring within the body. And here's a little bit of that side profile shot. That one appears to be taking a little bit longer to find a loving home. But now let's check out the European mod collection. They had three new ones for us, and I was really sad to see this one. Is that a black sparkle custom? No. Poor Blue Ribbon Gibson, nobody wanted it on the USA side. It sat for such a long time, they eventually pulled it down and they exported it to another country and it's gonna sit again. I like this guitar in kind of an ironic way, like I feel like as you enter the museum, oh, Gibson gave me the Blue Ribbon of a great collection. You know, you can make up some crappy story like that. And at the same time, I appreciate the paint job. I like how they made it look like an actual ribbon swirling on the neck. Kind of reminds me of like the Pabst beer logo up here though. It's got like an extended stinger going on at the same time. So I guess we'll have to see how long it sits this time. Maybe Gibson will have to auction it off one day. It's just one of those guitars that you kind of feel bad for it. Next we had Blue Mountain Flare. I vaguely remember seeing this one before and that's what a lot of the mod collection European ones are. It's just the USA rejects. Not that they're necessarily bad guitars, they just didn't find the right buyer pool within the three weeks that they gave people to find it. White plastics, changed out pickups, and a matching headstock with a nice dark blue reef and love that back. They also had Satin Gilded Ice Tea Burst for 5400 that's a 57 reissue. Basically what they did is they added a light bronze layer around the outside of a gold top and it completely transformed the look. That's another one that I vaguely remember seeing before. Kind of weird seeing a reissue with satin finish. And now let's talk the demo shop. Reverb is currently having a early Black Friday sale, meaning you can save between various times between now and the end of the year. So this is not a demo shop sale, it's just a reverb in general sale. So everything pretty much saw a 10 and 15% discount, which was pretty good for some things. Later on in the year though, Reverb is going to have a 20% off sale for sellers who wish to be a part of that. But as far as interesting models that drop this week, so many double necks. There was one, two, three, four double necks. Now three of them looked pretty much identical. They had the VOS finish, they had the golden knobs and the white switch tip. But I love the transition between these because it helps show you how different the knobs can make your guitar look. So again, gold with the white switch tip and the VOS making your chrome look aged versus not having the VOS gunk put on it, having reflector knobs and black. I'd be curious, which one do you guys like better? This one looks brand new, modern, I dig it. This one kind of gives you vintage-esque vibes. Most of those were 5400 at discount. Then on Thursday, they dropped another one that's a little bit cheaper, and only one of them sold. 
Then there was a 60 standard for 1850, kind of a, a meh top, but I'm sure it's a fine player. You're getting like a thousand bucks off. One of the best deals I saw was an 1850 for this Adam Jones standard. That's pretty good for one of those. It wasn't that long ago these things were selling for premiums over their new price. And if that's all you have to live with, that's not too bad. Oof, looks like you guys were too late on the Adam Jones. It's sold. 3200 for a 56 reissue, not too shabby. Low logo and all. I thought this top was pretty good. Two grand for this 50s AAA. I think in the last sale, I bought one of these for like 1650. <laughs> Sometimes you can get really good deals on these. Usually they sell fast. I like the candy cane striping on that one. This is a nice one to consider as well. Dirty Lemon 4800. You're not gonna find an R9 reissue much cheaper than that from the modern day production. So you might as well get it with a two year playability warranty. That right there is nothing to worry about in the long run. Then a gold top 50s. That's not bad if you want a Cardinal Red Karina Explorer, but still kind of expensive. Now the UK demo shop, they took a two week hiatus, but they're back. They give you like five new guitars, including a custom VOS, Gibson Songwriter, Ebony 70s Flying V, 61 SG Standard, supposed AAA 50s top, and regular SG Standard. But the only thing that really stood out to me was this heavily VOS Les Paul Access Custom. Again, the VOS is they just put gunk over top of the finish to make it look old. You either love it or you hate it. It usually causes a lot of confusion for people that don't understand what VOS means. Think of it as a polishing compound that you just let dry on the guitar. You can polish it off if you hate it and also just through natural play. You can also kind of rub areas through on it. But it took this from super glossy look into, you know, a little bit run down, if that's what you're after. Most people, they just go, geez, Gibson, can't you polish a guitar? There's so many scratches over this thing. I can't tell you how many emails I get like that. It's just a personal preference. And then lastly, our European friends. You can see a few new things, but what stood out to me was a 335 faded bass. I don't remember Gibson making these things recently. The EB tube is a thing, but this one's got like humbuckers and seems to be within relative recent production within the last 10 years. Hey, I guess pretty good. Made in USA 2013. Wow, I don't remember the Memphis being stamped that boldly. Got a lot of finish checking there and that was just slightly before my time when I would be paying attention to brand new guitars. This one's been a display model for quite some time. You don't see these things show up every day. And then lastly, an Ebony Firebird for 2200, which is pretty fair for one of these. Now this is the version right before the original collection, but to be honest, I don't think the original collection changed much on the Firebirds. That one's from 2018. It looks pretty slick with the Ebony finish. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.